Hi everyone, welcome to this how-to on TCC 53, one of our column design spreadsheets. My name is Emily Halliwell and I'm a structural engineer at the Concrete Centre. In this webinar, I'm going to talk you through how to design a column using the spreadsheet. I'm basing this on example 5.1 from our worked examples guide, which is available to purchase from our website. As you can see on screen, in this example, we have a 300 millimeter square edge column with the loading you can see in the diagram. On the right hand side, you can see our material properties, so our concrete grade and our reinforcement information, um, some geometry, so the size of the column, the slab, and our grid sizes, and also some design requirements, which we will need when we're using the spreadsheet. I'm now going to move across to the spreadsheet. So when you start in the spreadsheet, um, you just need to make sure that um, you enable everything at the top. Um, so this will be things like enabling macros um, to ensure that the uh, spreadsheet runs properly. You can also edit at the top your project, the project location and client. Um, so I'm just going to change that to 5.1 here. Um, and you've also got information in here about your designer um, and date and things like that. And then we'll start by inputting the material properties. So we've got an FCK value of 30. Um, and our cover to our link is 25 millimeters, which is correct. Um, I'm going to select a fire resistance period of 30 minutes, um, which was what was in our design information. For the fire design method, you have two options. Um, you can either select method B, um, which is based on, five point, on table 5.2, um, of the fire part of Eurocode 2, or you can select Annex C. Um, this is the Annex C, which is in the 2019 version of Eurocode, Eurocode 2 Part 1 2. Um, I'm going to choose method B, um, and then you also have an additional drop down here. Um, if you are looking for more information about any of the information you input, where you have these red triangles, um, you can hover over and there is more guidance on the information and what that means for your design. I'm going to then come over and input my section parameters. So uh, it's a 300 by 300 diameter column. Um, we'll assume two legs of links in each direction and two bars per face. Um, and then I'm going to have eight millimeter links at 175 millimeter vertical spacing. We then input our story height. So in our case, that's four meters. And there's a drop down here to select whether your column is braced or not, and my column is braced. We then input our connecting beam and slab data. Um, so this is used to calculate the rotational restraint on the column um, and therefore your effective length. Uh, it gives you guidance on what information to input if you want to assume that it's fully fixed or fully pinned. Um, in my case, I'm going to input my slab data. Um, so we've got a 7.5 meter grid. Um, but because we've got an edge column, it'll be half of that in the north-south direction. Um, you'll see the, the data copies down, um, but you can overwrite this. So if you've got a regular grid, it makes it quicker to input, um, but you can always amend to suit whatever layout you have. Our slab is 250 millimeters thick. Um, our span length is zero in the west direction because it's an edge column and then 7.5 meters elsewhere. And then I'm going to assume that my um, remote ends are fixed. And then you just input this with an FP as indicated. You can now see from this that um, the spreadsheet has calculated our effective length um, for the column. And so that's all done automatically. Um, you also have these drop downs here. Um, so this is based on guidance from PD6687, and you've got these drop downs. I'm going to assume a column above and below, which is what the diagram indicated. And as you can see, that has an imp impact on the effective length here. And um, we also have these drop downs. These are about applying imperfection moments. Um, I'm going to assume that the imperfections are only applied to the critical access axis because Eurocode 2 allows me to do that, but you can select whatever you want for your design. And likewise, um, whether the 
um, moments replied to both sides or to one side only. Um, we also have an input box here for the minimum bar diameter um, for your column. So you can, um, perhaps if you get no fit um, or an issue with the fire design, you can change your bar diameter here for a larger size um, to hopefully find a valid design. But I'm gonna leave that as 20 millimeters for now. We then come down and input our load combinations. Um, so you can put up to six different combinations in. Um, and so perhaps if you have, um, you're using equation 6.10a and 6.10b, you might want to use those, or um, you might have other reasons that you need to check different combinations. So this will run the analysis and work out the worst case of those for you. Um, and then I'm just inputting the one load case, um, which you saw in the diagram. Um, and you can see that this has populated these moment diagrams over here. It has also calculated down here our design moments um, and carried out a biaxial check. And it's given me um, a requirement for four 20 millimeter diameter bars in my column. You can see in this fire column that it says that my design is okay. Um, if I just go back up and change my fire resistance period to something larger, say two hours, um, you can see that this doesn't work on the fire design requirements. And this key down here tells you what these numbers relate to. So here our column is too small and we might need to increase the number of bars or the bar diameter to get that to work. Um, but that's not a problem in our case because our um, fire resistant period is only 30 minutes. So aside from this main page where you input the information, you can also view these charts. Um, so this shows you the interaction diagrams for each axis. This is a good way of seeing um, your sort of utilization of your column. Um, and you can also visualize the biaxial check down here. We also have this calculation page. This shows you um, the imperfections, the moments, the slenderness, and how all of that is calculated, and then how the design moment is generated at the bottom. This is particularly useful if you need to um, export calculations for checking or for um, perhaps submitting to building control. And you'll see if you go to print, um, these fit onto an A4 page. So they're easy to share um, either on printing or by PDF. So now we've seen the design in the um, spreadsheet. I'm just gonna look at um, comparing the worked example in our guide to the output from the spreadsheet. So the hand calculation calculates the effective length based on tabulated factors. So these are conservative. So it assumes our effective length is 0.85 times um, the length. As you can see, that's significantly larger than the spreadsheet calculates because that uses the stiffnesses um, of the incoming elements. That then means that you end up with a reduced um, design moment. And when we compare our output from the worked example, which is a hand calculation where you need four H25 bars, you can actually reduce that to four H20s with a more refined design using the spreadsheet. Hopefully this has given you a good overview of how TCC 53 works. If you have any questions about using or purchasing spreadsheets, please email info at concretecenter.com. Thank you for listening. <laughs>